A lot of people who have just started to use Flutter have some troubles trying to understand how Flutter works with the backend, uh, if Flutter is a backend language or a fr frontend language. And in Charlie, in this video, we are going to talk about this thing here. For those who are new, I'm a Muslim Flutter and web developer. I have worked a lot uh, as a web developer and now I'm a Flutter developer too. If you are interested in these things here uh, about programming and not only tutorials, so check out my channel and if you like the things that I do, subscribe. Flutter is a front-end language. A lot of people ask if they could use Flutter for the backend. The main response is no. The front end and the back end are two distinct things. With Flutter, you communicate directly uh, with the user. This is why it is called the front end. The back end is another distinct entity, and to develop your back end application, you could use many languages. You can use, uh, for example, Node. Uh, no JavaScript for those who know, you can use Python, you can use PHP, you can use even Dart. The, there is a framework called Aqueduct that it is a new framework. And the main thing is that you have the front end and the back end. And with the front end, you send requests to the back end and they communicate in this way back and forth. And you, uh, with your application or your website, you ask or uh, ask for things or uh, do some requests for things that you want from the backend. So even though they are two distinct things, you make those requests and you ask, for example, what are the last users? And with the backend, you, uh, it gives back a response with the last users. Another example could be um, that with your front end, when you are creating a user, so for example, you have an application where a new user is uh, registering and this data, you send it to the backend and the back with the backend, you do your checks if the user exists or not. And uh, if the user exists, you log him in or if it doesn't exist, you register it. All the heavy part, the part where you check and things like that, you do it in the backend. When you are developing and you are in the development process, you first uh, start by uh, developing your backend application in your local machine, so in your own computer, and you work with it locally. But then when you put it in production, it is up to you if you have an, a server inside your house, you can use this, this that one or if you uh, want, you can rent a server where you can put your backend application and you can communicate with it. And basically uh, with your application, you communicate to the server. It is suggested, for example, that you get the server near the place that you want your project to work on. So for example, if I'm in the United States and I have done a project that uh, works only in the the United States, so I will want a server that it is in that in this place, because when you are communication, when you are communicating with your application or your website, you are sending a HTTP request, and the server is responding back. So, the more the server is far, and the more time it will take to um, have this communication between the client, the front end and the server. Usually you communicate with RESTful APIs. So on your server, you uh, allow the user to call some endpoints. For example, uh, you have a, a slash users. And if you call this endpoint, you will get all the users and things like that. So you communicate with your server by endpoints that with your in your server with your backend language you um, allow and for example you can allow some clients and other uh, uh, others not based on your criteria to communicate with flutter you use futures 
async and await. It is not important which language you use as a backend language, so you can use any one that you like and the one that it is more performant for you. It depends on your projects and the things that you want to create. I suggest you to uh, use the language that you like the most and don't follow the trends in it always depends on what you want to do with it if you are learning it to uh, to work with it so maybe you will want to take a well-known uh, uh, backend language but if it is not uh, try to take the language that you like the most that the syntax is the uh, the one that is more connected to your liking so wrapping up Flutter is a front-end language and uh, as a back-end language, uh, the back-end is a distinct thing and as a back-end language you can use a lot of things, other languages or the same language with Dart for example and it is up to you. But are two distinct things and they communicate uh, with each other. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, inshallah see you the next time.